Hi, Rich Karuba for BowlingBall.com. We've been doing a series of articles, one each month, on BowlingBall.com, Bowlversity, Questions and Answers. And this is part seven of this ongoing se season this year. Uh, there's three questions we get answered typically from bowlers. And so I'll, t I'll do my best. We have the article. You can read the, uh, the exact content but uh, in Bowlversity section of our site. But here it goes. First question is, as a new bowler, considering purchasing my first performance bowling ball, what are the basic differences between solid and pearl reactive bowling balls? Well, uh, it's, it's a pretty clear difference. First, the solid and per, uh, pearl cover stocks are subclassifications of the overall reactive resin cover stock group. Uh, solid reactives have the greatest amount of microscopic reactive pores on the ball surface of the ball compared to other reactive cover stocks. The solid cover stock comes in, in different classifications of surface texture preparation from the factory. It could be in a polished finish, sanded finishes, and even rubbing compound buff finishes. So therefore, the degree of surface friction can be controlled within that subcategory of solid reactive bowling balls. Now, the solid reactive cover stocks coupled with the symmetric core designs, as example, are normally the choice for heavy or medium oil conditions because they're very controllable balls, aggressive in the front end to fight the oil, and smooth in the, in the mid lane to transition, uh, again, smoothly at the break point to the pocket. Uh, now, when you talk about pearl cover stocks, uh, the addition of the mica material blended into the reactive cover stock material, and with the inclusion of that mica, it roughens out the microscopic pores, uh, causing the ball reaction on dry lanes to be extended in length. Okay, so you're going to get good skid. Reactive pearl bowling balls have the ability to react quickly on high friction portions of the lane, and when they're matched with asymmetric core designs, as example, then they're going to have a long skid motion in the front end and a strong and angular back end motion from the break point to the pocket. So the mica additives add also some cosmetic sparkle to the ball surface in appearance. I hope some of that information helps you uh, determine solid and, rea and pearl uh, reactives. Uh, and what you need to do is just read up a little bit on them and make sure you check all the description details on a bowling ball before you make a purchase. So you know exactly what kind of ball, uh, reactive resin ball you're investing in. Next, although I'm a league bowler, I bowl only in the fall and winter season. I travel with my family every sun Sunday. Are there any quick tune-up tricks I can practice after summer vacation and before the next league season? Hey, there's a guy thinking ahead. Uh, probably he hasn't bowled at all in previous years in the summer, lives in cold climate, wants to enjoy the summer with his family. That happens all the time. Uh, well, uh, I think he's smart this year to make sure. I would get out and practice at least three games a week if you can, once a week or once every two weeks bowl a few games. That makes sense. Keep your hand in the ball. Get the feel of the ball. Keep a little feeling of timing and coordination and picking up spares and feel comfortable on the lanes. Don't quit entirely for three months, number one. In other words, uh, you want to, when, you, when you walk to the foul line and you're not practicing very much, keep a consistent pace or tempo of footsteps without hurrying the final two steps of your approach. And you want to do the similar procedure with your backswing and your forward swing. Uh, don't hurry your arm swing. You want to have a full, complete, accelerated follow-through, but don't grab the ball and hurry it through or force it through. Be a little patient and wait on your arm swing. Minimize your leg and arm tension so you get consistent swing pace. Relax muscles. Remember, we'll move more smoothly, quickly, and effectively, and, and repeatedly. Hold your form at the foul line. Make sure you have good balance. And wait till uh, after you release the ball and the ball passes the targeting arrows or wherever you aim on the lane. Uh, the balance during and after that critical release of the bowling ball is vital to accuracy and, of course, to getting good results. Keep it simple. Huh? Success comes uh, from good physical fundamentals and then applying them when you're bowling in competition. It's that simple. Our third question is, I'm considering joining my first ever bowling league. Are there any tips I should be made aware of? Well, <clears throat> you want to shop around for the right bowling center first. Find a place, obviously, convenient for you to get to place that feels good when you walk in there that you're comfortable uh, or any teammates that you might have joining a league for the first time with you. Uh, you want to check at the, desk, the, the control desk first. Ask for the league manager, league coordinator, anybody that's in charge of leagues that's on staff at the bowling center to discuss the various type of leagues, what times of day or night that they are going to be scheduled, and which days of the week so you can pick something that's convenient for you. And also, you want to make sure that you find something that 
that meet your needs. If you're a new bowler or just learning, you have a relatively low experience level in the sport, you want to be com uh, compatible with the other bowlers in the league. So communicate that information to the league managers so they understand you're just trying to get started and they don't fit you into a league that is very competitive and maybe with people of high, much higher skill levels where you're going to be a fish out of water and very uncomfortable. It's very important to get started in the right way so you enjoy your experience and as you get better and bowl better you might step up in competition in future leagues. Handicap leagues make it uh, fair and equitable for all bowlers. You'll establish a handicap after you bowl some games and so this way you can uh, uh, bowl at bow, uh, bowlers of varying skill levels, l uh, less skill or more than yourself, and still you have equal chances of winning, so that's important to know. And you might want to practice with some new teammates or get to know them before you start with league, so the first night of league you don't feel awkward and, and nervous and confused about what to do. And if you have questions, talk about, uh, ask them and talk about your uh, issues that you have in mind with the bowling center personnel or with your teammates, with the league officers. Everyone will help steer you the right way so you can have some fun. I hope that helps. We'll see you next week, or next month, rather. Thank you.